So this isn't a full on retrospective of 2007, but it's a really impressive year for Bionicle in my consideration. It is a year that I think kind of finds its own footing for the later era of the franchise, right? It still has its issues, don't get me wrong. Obviously, fragile lime green joints, that's definitely a problem. But ignoring that for a moment, it does a lot right. The identity of the characters is very defined and generally makes sense for the setting that they're in, the atmosphere they're in. And I think it's a good atmosphere. It's not really anything that I can recall from basically any other franchise. Of course, I'm not well versed in many others, so, you know. I'm sure other people have done, oh, underwater fighting, right? Like Aquaman's the thing that exists. But generally speaking, I like a lot about 2007, but there's one thing that I have a gripe about. So in 2007 Bionicle, not including the Baraki sets, there are, to my count, 13 to 14 masks that are new to that year. What I mean by that is, you obviously have the six Mari Toa. So that's six masks right there. You also have a handful of Titans, each of which include their own exclusive masks. Maxilos has two, Hydraxon has one, Lysovic has one, and even Karzani has 1.5 if you want to consider the Hordika mask a mask itself, right? So generally speaking, there's a lot there, but one thing that 2007 is missing is black and white masks specifically. Now, I don't know the specific reason for this. I don't have an issue with getting more silver masks, but until this point, I believe we had four, right? We obviously got a silver mask, the Avoki, all the way back in 2003 on the Makuta set for his hands. Two of them, pretty generous overall. We also got the silver Norik mask, which is Turaga Doom's mask, but you know, in silver. Great mask, it's a lovely piece. But also in 2006, we would get Axon, and of course we would get the Vizon and Finrak. And assuming if you consider Finrak's head a mask, I don't, but generally speaking, that's still two more masks, right? So overall, we're, we're pretty good on those. Now we had a lot of black and white masks, you could make the argument, but I'm looking specifically at axle based masks here. So I'm excluding Toa, Turaga, and Toa Nuva masks. And obviously I'm excluding Karana, Krata, things like that. So in that regard, we really only have two, right? The Metru masks. And again, if you want to consider the Hordika masks, we have those, but I'm rounding this down to axle-based masks specifically. Now, they're good masks in general, don't get me wrong, but I do have one issue with Nuju specifically, right? Having the scope inexplicably placed on his mask, a thing that had not belonged to him before, and a mask power that's not really his anyway. But that's fine, I can sit beside that, no big deal. In this case, however, with Matoro, an ice character here, we got a silver mask that was not scoped, so it would have been excellent to have seen this appear in white. Unfortunately, it didn't and never would be re-released in that color. One of these days, I'm going to make one. Ignore the neighbor starting their motorcycle for the fourth time today. Anyway, well, I got so much time to record, but that said... I love the design of this mask. I love the really wide open eyes. The first time we'd actually seen that on an ice character's mask, I think ever up until this point, at least a mask that was like explicitly for an ice character because this is Matoro's uniquely. But silver's its own thing, right? You can have an issue with it. You could love the fact that these masks come in silver and it's still a very neutral, very usable color. It looks gorgeous in silver too. So I'm not going to complain about it that much. It's a gripe, sure, but it's a small one. No, the more major gripe that I have, though, is, and this is also something shared with at least most of the silver masks from 2007, is the inexplic in inexplicable asymmetry of these masks. Because when we look at the Trina, it's not only that it's silver, but it also has this one connection off to one side. And why is that? I'm not saying it's bad. It's actually nice. And I think that it would have been nice to get more masks even in the future with connections like these. But generally speaking, just one connection here for a bar sized item. Why not mirror that? It wouldn't have looked any worse having mirrored it. So why not? You know, anyway. It's generally perfectly fine in my opinion. I think the mask, it's it's pretty minimal how well, asymmetric it is, so like I can, it's fine, whatever. But one of the ones that gets kind of on my nerves a bit more is this one, because this is pretty obvious. It, it's right there out in the open, you know? And it's interesting to me because there were prototypes of this mask that had one of these on each side. Now, I wouldn't have even stood behind that. Like, I, I prefer it probably just for the sake of symmetry, 
But my solution would have been a little bit simpler. It would have been an extra cost, don't get me wrong, and I have talked about it in a previous video, but when we look at another mask that's very egregiously asymmetric, and it's not going to show up super well here because of the, you know, saturation of the red, but this is kind of obnoxious to me. This is, for all intents and purposes, a how from 2007, but it's got all this other stuff tacked onto it. And why? Like, I, I get it. They serve a purpose in the actual set itself, but they don't need to be there. And LEGO designs these sets at the end of the day. They can design around these things. Or what I might have preferred, make those connection points attached to the mask itself inward and then add a sprue. Now, this is where I think things get interesting. Sprues are not unique and, in fact, have never really appeared in Bionicle at all, at least not in anything that isn't a system set. But sprues are very useful because they allow LEGO to make one mold, but you get multiple items and thus choice of items as well. What if each of your Toa Mavri sets came with one of these sprues and maybe LEGO designs two sprues in total? And now it's up to you what breathing apparatus they have. Do they have one that sticks off of the side? Obviously, if LEGO gives you plenty of connection points, as they've done here with these bar holes on the side, maybe add a bar hole on each side here as well. And then make all of these sprue accessories attached to those bar points. That's pretty nice, right? Because now you have something that you can completely customize. And here's the thing. The Toa Mavri are great sets. Don't get me wrong. But they're a lot less aquatic, in my opinion, than the Baraki are. The Baraki are very explicitly based on creatures at the end of the day. Some of them, obviously, more so than others, like Elec being a, what, urchin or an eel or what is he? Anyway. Point being, though, the Mavri, the thing that really makes them aquatic is the mask and the breathing tubes. You remove that, and for the most part, the aquatic nature of these sets goes away. And that's fine. They look great as sets. They're a very cohesive-looking team, and they look excellent on a shelf, right? I haven't displayed them back there, but generally speaking, they're good. I like them. Stand behind them. But how cool would it have been to allow these masks to be able to attach to not only the sprue accessories that come with each of these sets and give customers the choice of which sprue they want to attach. Obviously, you can have an official one in the booklet, a canon one, whatever the case may be. Or maybe it's in the story that they are able to switch between these different items and the different items perform different tasks. One is a breathing apparatus, one is a light apparatus, whatever the case may be. And then you could have it generally explain that the characters are able to breathe underwater, but the breathing apparatus just makes it better or more efficient or it extracts something out of the water whatever the case is right all told though it's a lot of masks that come from 2007 and many of them most of them well maybe not most but several of them at the very least have a lot of extra connection points and i really appreciate that some of them even do completely unique things like this one here not having an axle at all i do consider this one still a mask more so than some of the others if only because it is still designed around the metro head but at the very least i could definitely see making the argument that it's not technically a mask and that's fine at least not you know by the definition of this video but there's a lot of masks for this year and they all look exceptional so these are just gripes of mine. Do I see them as a problem? Nah, not really. Would I criticize the year because this is a thing that exists? No. And in one regard, LEGO did address it because there is another mask that is also asymmetric and it's Axons right here on another black character, but unfortunately using a silver mask. And thankfully, LEGO would give us a replacement for this piece via Von Nebula. And now I hate saying via and Von right after each other, but point being, right? <laughs> I think this is a good sort of compromise for us. We have a 2007 mask, obviously coming out in 2010, but in black, and that works. If you want to use it on your Hydraxon, if you want to recolor them with this mask, that's cool. If you want to switch it out for Nuparu, if you want, that's up to you as well. You want to make your own characters, maybe a black Mabri Matoran, because we didn't get those either, and thus no black masks. Again, I guess you could make the argument, well, I mean, technically, sure. 2008, on the plus side, did also help to rectify this because at the very least, I just knocked over the bag, but I was trying to reach for it. 2008 gave us the one and only white symmetric mask that has an axle connection on it. A lot of people harp on this guy, and I think that that's fair. He's very vanilla, but I mean, all of the 2008 Avmatoran were. So Leek is fine, and his mask is actually pretty good. If you've ever compared it to the Ruru, by the way, I'm just going to grab one out of the bag as well. It's actually pretty similar. It's shocking how many similarities these masks share. They're not the same, but they're generally similar in terms of their overall size. But 2007, it's an interesting year. 
and I think that um, it's a pretty good one, all things considered. Before I end this video, I did also want to show something else off. I did want to ruin your childhood, finally, um, since I haven't done that yet, by telling you that Norix or Duma's mask here is not the same mold as Dakar's, which I find interesting. They're basically the same. It might as well be. But there are some subtle differences between this version and this version. And it satisfies me a little bit. Again, this being the only mask we got in a solid key orange like this is lovely. And it's my favorite of the Metro era masks. So having it in its own unique Metro era color is great. Now just give us the rest of the pieces in key orange and I'll be happy. All right. So that's it for this one, guys. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a subscribe because it does help the channel grow to that 4000 milestone, I guess. And of course, as always, you can check out the discord server down in the description below or Instagram or Patreon if you want to help support the channel and let me know your thoughts. Which of these masks do you like the most or what are your issues with these? Or if not these, what masks do you have issues with and why? Or if you don't have issues with, that, with any, then let me know the masks you like the most and why defend the objectively worst mask in the world. I'm joking, by the way, it's fine. <laughs> all right. I'll see y'all in the next one. Take care.